Welcome to the All Things Performance Podcast. This is Josiah Igano with my co-host Derek Divine. D. Diesel, how we doing, man? What's, I'm I'm uh, I'm living I'm living good, man. How we doing up there in the uh, on the west side? The great the great Northwest, man. We doing, man. We hanging in there. You know what I'm saying? Blocking and tackling the fundamentals. Hey. We'll be getting into that. We'll be getting we into will. that today. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many people doing that. Nah, man. Nah, man. Hey, so real quick. You know, we're going to hit him with that fire here. 20 minutes of fire. Tua. Tago Bailoa. Let's talk yeah. about that, man. How do you think that was handled? What is the authenticity factor and everything? What do you got, man? Uh, you know, there's always... There's always... First off, uh, that was one of the worst things I've seen in a while, man. It was really sad to see, see that happen. Um, no, you never want to see that. Um, ever, uh, dude, it's tough, man. I don't even know the authenticity and, and all the, I don't think we'll ever know all the ins and outs of that one. I don't know. You know, there, I think there's so many moving parts, so many, so many different people, you know, I mean, obviously I know you had talked about like, you know, the whole player want to play, like I get all that. And I would say that based off of what we've seen media wise and just what I know from playing, what you know, playing uh, somebody like Tua, it's like they've all they have ever portrayed this year for him is uh, this is your last year to do something, you know, better, no doubt, better make no it happen. Doubt. So it's like, what do you expect the guy to do? Yeah. His livelihood's on the line. You know I mean? Like his football career is on the line this year. No doubt. Yeah, I think you bring up some good points. You know, media has this way of uh, adding fuel to the fire. Sometimes it's, yeah. it's, an, it's an unnecessary fire and it's a fire that they create, right? Oh, yeah. So, you know, I, I, there's a couple of thoughts that I have, man. First of all, just like you, just to share my sentiment, like, man, anybody who's ever put on pads and a yeah. helmet, when we saw that, like that, that's some stuff that people will just never understand. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, because it's like the game that you love, the game that you love produces an injury such as this. Mm -hmm. And 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 the feeling that you get is just like, man, like we love this game, but we don't love to see stuff like that happen. And it, and it, it I think it hit a hard, uh, like it, it hit some heartstrings. I'll say that it hit some heartstrings. And hopefully this is a galvanizing moment, you know, uh, for the NFL uh, when it comes to player safety and, and stuff like that. I know that they're trying, I think that, I think there was a lot of mis miscues, you know, a lot of miscues just from what we know, right? We don't even know everything, but I feel like there's no. a lot of miscues that we've already seen. Like Buddy went back into the game, same game he got concussed, comes yeah. back on a short week, mind you, gets concussed again, mess around and flew back on the team flight, which I don't understand that one. You know, and then yeah. and then the, the the coach is talking about, oh, you know, we were watching a comedy show on on the film or, or on the screen, and and Tua is himself, all this stuff. I'm like, yo, bro, like, like that's just like red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. And then to me, I think one of the things that I am the most disappointed about is that the leader, right, the head, the face of the NFL, and we all know who he is. He's been nowhere to be found. Like, like, I don't even know what the dude looks like. He's been nowhere to be found. And that says something about leadership to me, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I, it's tough because, you know, I was, I was talking to somebody else on kind of like a different show, different podcast, and we get really locked into the, to really 1% of the league, you know, all of the top tier pro bowlers, you know, the best guy on each team, best couple guys on each team, um, which honestly, it's like, you know, Stefan Diggs, he doesn't got to worry about health care down the road. Sorry, he's good to go. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. Dak Prescott, good to, Ezekiel Elliott. Those guys are fine, man. They they got paid. They got a Joey Bosa. All those guys got big type paydays and awesome. Good for them. Like, that's great. But the other 99% of the league is just, they're not in that boat. And... You know, it's tough because it doesn't really seem like what they're giving, they're going to get. 
You know, like they keep talking about, dude, you see a new, you see a new style of helmet every year. I'm sorry, everybody, NASA, <laughs> whoever you are out there making these things, you know, Rydell, all those cats, there is nothing you're going to make that is going to prevent head injuries when you have two massive, massive human beings, male human beings, mind you, running full speed at each other. Yeah. Not gonna happen. There will yeah. always be head, neck, back, spine trauma. No doubt. Always. No doubt. And so I think there has to be something really, really, you know, looked into at the deepest of levels of what are we doing for these players 15, 20, 30 years down the road? Because you're starting to you see all the well, look at Junior Seau and Aaron Hernandez and you know, probably a laundry list of other guys. Oh, so and many all, more. Uh, yeah, and it all comes back to what? Oh, CTE. Hey, yeah. it's another CTE victim. You know, they even, I mean, I mean, I remember when, uh, Col, you know, Colt Brennan recently passed away a year or so ago and they, and they came out with reports, CTE reports again. It's just kind of like, you know, we can't blend, uh, you know, there is an element of us as football players, you're playing to play, but when you cut guys, I mean, Junior Seau played 20 years in the league. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't there a little bit of a responsibility on their side of things? Yeah. So another thing that I will say, I mean, you bring up some great points and there's going to be people who don't understand, you know, the other side of this, this coin. Yeah. And one of, one of the things I will say about the other side of this coin is that there, it, every player understands that there is risk, right? Yes. Every under, every player understands that there is risk. Every family, every mom, every dad, every child that agrees to sign their kid up for high school football, pop Warner football, when you play in college, when you play in the pros, like we understand that there's inherent risk in, in what we're doing. And so I think that people need to um, like remember that. And also like when you start looking at sports, right? Especially when it comes to injury, there is what we call over conformity and under conformity, right? So an over, con over conforming athlete is an athlete who, if they get hurt, right? If something happens, if there is injury right there, oh, what, whatever I need to do, I'll do it. Oh, it's three sets of five, you know, it, 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 it's 60%, I'll do that. Oh, we're, it's gonna be six weeks, okay, we'll do it, right? It's an over conformity that happens mm -hmm. with certain athletes. It's like, yes, sir, no ma'am, you know, no ma'am, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like checking boxes and we're gonna do whatever we can do to play. And then you have uh, what we call under conforming athletes who, when it comes to the, you know, sport ethic, like they reject or dismiss it. They're like, no, nah, dude, I'm playing. I don't care what happens, I'm playing. And, you know, we see a lot of that in the NFL, a lot of that, especially in the National Football League, because unlike other leagues, and you know, despite guaranteed money, if you, you know Barry, and you can speak to this, you know Barry than anybody, if you don't play, you're not getting paid. Well, and I, and I'll tell you right now, I, I don't think there's a, I think you can make an argument for the NFL that it is so easy to replace somebody. They move on quicker than anybody else. They'll just find somebody else to do your job for you. Now, you know, there's always going to be the, you know, the upper echelon guys, of course, that are going to be very, very hard to replace the Peyton Mannings, the Aaron Rodgers, you know, Michael Vicks. And I like, I get all that. But really, the majority of it, and, and unfortunately, two has been put in that group. You know, you are expendable. And I don't think he's gotten a fair shake down there in Miami for his first two years. And you put some put some really good pieces around them. They got a great defense going on down there. And look at what look at what he's done. I think he's yeah. played really well. It's like that's sure. awesome. So now he's got all this momentum going. I would I would I would be surprised if he didn't feel pressure to get back in the game, to keep his spot, to keep the momentum, and to be able to continue to pursue this dream that, you know, not a lot of us do, but there is a large group of kids. It's like you you bring up Pee Wee. We've been doing this since Pee Wee. Yeah. And, and I do agree also with your point 100% of we do know what we're getting ourselves into. I get all that. But once you start making the type of money you're making off these kids, which is now college football, there needs to be something owed to them. Yeah. These kids are putting their these kids are putting their their health on the line and high school, that doesn't matter. I get that. You know, that's you know, that's something they're just doing to do. But when you're making the kind of money, I mean, like I saw the Wisconsin coach got you know, got 
bought out the other day for $11 million. With 20 million still left on the contract. And so it's like, so if you got money to just write check like that, uh, you can't make an excuse that, uh, that these kids shouldn't be taken care of, man. And uh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, and then we know we don't even need to get into the type of money. I mean, I'll tell you right now, there's no way the. Uh, I mean, uh, we could take the famous line from uh, from Jeffrey Burfright, is your boss is never going to pay you the kind of money where you're going to live next door to him. No, and no, so yeah, we're, exactly. We're, we're going to talk about all this money they're paying players, all players that never gotten paid more than this. Well, if the owners are paying that, then what are the owners making? Exactly. Now check this exactly. out. Exactly. These are these are these are great points. These are great points, and I want to look at I, 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 because a lot of people think that this is just like table talk or whatever, you know, uh, locker room talk or you know, uh, you know, you know, water cooler discussion. Yeah, but a lot of but a lot is, of people don't think of that, Joe, because they're just watching the game. Right. Right. Like, so, how so long has Tua been? How long has Tua been playing football? Like, when did you start playing? Yeah, since he was a kid. I mean, I started playing football, Pee Wee football, when I was seven. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. so you're talking about all the way until I was done, I was 30. Right. It's like So check this out. Check this out. When you when you look at when you when you look at when you look at when you look at the literature, let's look at the literature just real quick. These are reasons why athletes risk pain and injury because there's a there's a difference between pain there's there's a difference between injury right or yes. discomfort it's a big difference yes. so this is going to be a well duh but it's good to go back to the literature right number one love of the game yeah. self explainable yeah. uh, self explanatory sense of time urgency which you alluded to earlier yeah sense of fraternity with teammates who have done the same. Uh, who have done the same so it's like this foxhole mentality like yep. my guys are out there struggling i know i'm the best position yeah. i'm the best person for this position we need you this week bro we and need, we, you, this we need week. you yeah we need yeah. you to score right we need you to to, to play defense whatever we need the you case in the game. Be. fear of being labeled this week not one of us wants to be labeled this week right yeah. fear of losing their position or playing time look what's going on in dallas right now Cooper Rush is being held as the you know Joe Montana. Cooper Mon Mon might as well oh. call buddy Cooper Montana because he's three yeah. and zero. Oh. Three know and zero. Oh. Uh, fear of being overlooked in team selection. Uh, pressure from coaches, teammates, management, or themselves. Right, the pressure that we put on ourselves. Hey man, we need you out there. Hey, we're trying to make that playoff run. Yeah, hey, you gonna be ready? We got, this big, we got a big game coming up this week. You gonna be ready this week? Yeah, yeah. I've seen that in every every league, right? Yeah. Um, and then insulation from medical opinions outside of the sport of sports and networks. So when you start looking at that, right, and you start looking at <clears throat> the Tua situation, whatever situation, it makes you scratch your head. But then check this out. Check this out. This is a random assessment, right? I'm, I'm going to read to you a couple of things from a random assessment for for an injured athlete. Yeah. And I want us to look at this Tua situation and whatever other situation that we've seen serious in injury in front of our faces and players trying to come back, right? So so it's usually never, sometimes, most of the time, always. So on a continuum, how would you grade yourself? Never, sometimes, most of the time, always. Number one, hidden or not reported an injury to coaches or medical staff. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, I'm not hurt. No. It was my ankle, it's my back. Uh, you know, it's just a little sore. I just, I just moved it wrong. Oh yeah. When, when you know you're hurt, you know well, you're hurt. I mean, it's like, dude, you got to think about how many guys outside, how many guys are seeking maybe treatment outside because of some of the protocols they're trying to avoid. Hundred percent. They're they're they're, right? they're 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 staying away from their own respective medical staff because if it gets to the top, I might not play. And then if I don't play, all those reasons that I just read, they all come into play. Yeah. Right. Number two, continued sport participation against the wish of medical providers. Hey, uh, we don't think you should play. Yeah. Well, doc, I, I'm I I feel pretty good. No, yeah, you're not, we don't think we should play. You're not paying my mortgage, Doc. So uh, thanks for your opinion, but I'll be okay. Happen. Hey, so again, never, sometimes, most of the time, always, right? Another yeah. one, used prescription medications to play through pain. Let's not talk about that one. We ain't even going to talk about that one. 
We're not even going to talk about that one because that yeah. one is like right in our face all the time. I'm not even, yeah. even going to touch that one. Yeah. Um, perform more than the prescribed amount of rehabilitation activities. Hey, we want you to go 60%, three sets of 12 on this. And guess what? We're going to do double that because we want to heal twice as fast. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right? We're doing more than we need to be doing. Doc says, hey, don't go too hard. We just need you to do this. And we're doing above and beyond. Dude, Way we've above. Had, we, we've had, man, I can tell you story after story after story of players who they wanted to be out there so bad that they actually hurt themselves because they were doing the most. Exactly. And, yeah. then the la and then the last one, Yeah. this is the last one and this is like the nail, bro. This one is the nail on the, on the proverbial coffin here, right? So, so again, never sometimes, most of the time, always, when an athlete gets injured, how about this one? We're talking about the NFL, right? How about this yeah. one? Disregarded long-term health consequences so you could play now. Yeah. Well, you don't think about it. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you're making decisions based off of something you just can't even imagine. Right. And, I, you know, we haven't even hit on this one, which I think is a great point that just goes right in line with what you're saying is. And then we're talking about like two like concussions. Right. We're talking about injuries that you that are probably the hardest injury to evaluate. You know, and, and also something that it's, I think it's really hard to test. Like you, like you hurt your knee, you, you can feel the stability of that build itself back up. I think, but there's also times, right, where you're like, oh man, I feel good today. Oh man, this knee's feeling really good. And then you'll go out and do some specific movement. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. That doesn't feel good. Yeah. I can do all these other movements, but that one is not okay. And I don't necessarily know if you can do that with your brain. Yeah, so I think you start feeling good and then it takes one little hit. And because even if you looked at Tua's hit in that game, it didn't look horrid. Neither of them did, really. You know what we I mean? We see that. We see, dude, we see dudes bouncing, getting heads bounced all the time. And they get right up. Yeah. And so it's that's the thing. It's like, and that's no shot on Tua. That's just like, that's just the makeup of everyone's body. You just, it's, so, it could be just the right angle or. So anytime your brain moves around in your head, like people think that a concussion is, oh, you got knocked out. Dude, you can get concussed by just a little, like, you know how many offensive linemen are getting concussed play after play after play? Oh, man. Like, like anytime, see, see, pound for pound, boxing is the most dangerous sport. It's the most dangerous sport. Why? Because you're getting concussed and micro concussed every round. Your yeah. brain is sloshing around in your head every time you get hit. <laughs> it's the most, it's the most dangerous yeah. sport, pound for yeah. pound, because you're getting concussed. People think that you gotta get knocked out to be concussed. Uh no, people get concussed all the time. People get uh, a brain injury all the time. And 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 you we see it all the time. So uh, I mean, we could talk about this for a long time, but man, at the end of the day, man, uh, Godspeed, man, to, to Tua, and hopefully he gets us uh, well really quick. And again, I hope this is a galvanizing po uh, point for the NFL. So when you start looking at Monday Night Football, dude, did you know they said that Matt Stafford has thrown 28, 28, bro, pick sixes, pick sixes in his career. Aaron, you know how many Aaron Rodgers has thrown? I know he threw one on Sunday. Yeah, four. That's it. Well, dude, I, I know that uh, I think I heard a stat. I could be wrong. They were saying Aaron Rodgers hasn't even thrown 100 interceptions. It's crazy, like, man. I would love to know how many. I mean, I mean, you start talking about a guy that can take care of the football. I'm telling you, you know? man. Hey, hey, listen. Last night's game, this was my this is my breakdown. Run game, non-existent. They had like what 57 yards? Uh, and then they had two pass plays. Pass play number one, drop back. A hey, Stafford drop back, throw it to the open receiver. That was play number one. Play number two, play action, find Cooper. Find Cooper Cup. Play action, yeah. find Cooper. Buddy had 19 but targets, dude. And then one of them was a pick six, and he almost had another. I mean, it's just like, they, dude, that whole Sean McVay, uh, Shanahan thing, Shanahan's winning that one, bro. I, I, I will say, you do have, well, first off, very true. See, this is the thing that we've gone into because, like, you know, this is the whole thing where I think we try to make things too difficult. We make an offensive football too difficult. I mean, you should see. I mean, I was I was watching a couple of times this weekend, dude, where they, you know, they're on the quarterback in the huddle 
and he is saying full-on paragraphs for their play calling that huddle. <laughs> you know, and it's like, dude, why are we making this so difficult? Here's my breakdown of last night. This is all I got to say. Now, it wouldn't be a good morning football length based show. This is it. Your O-line couldn't block our D-line. Good night. See, and that's the thing. Like, it don't matter who is in the backfield. It doesn't matter if you have the Walter Payton, Barry Sanders. It doesn't matter who's your quarterback. Tom Brady, Joe Mott. It doesn't matter who. Michael Vick would have done a little better due to the speed, but it still don't matter. Last night, dude, if you can, if you can get pressure without blitzing, it's a wrap. And that's what the Niners did. Four man they, rush, four man rush, almost the entire and they're game. winning, and they're winning. It's it's ridiculous, man. And it's and that's the difference. The San Francisco 49ers are not better than the Los Angeles Rams from a skill based offense receivers. Yeah. They're not. I'm sorry. And the thing is, is when your defense plays that well for the Niners, it don't matter what you got on offense because. Look at what the defense is doing. Yeah. The defense scored just as much as the offense did last night, it looked like almost. Just ugly scores, too. Ugly. Just it nice, was. Nice, man. Like field like, goal, field goal. Drive, 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 field goal. Drive, drive, well, drive. And then, you had the, and then you had the Debo Samuel, which was like, that was a Pro Bowl play. That's what that was. I mean, come you on. You know, bro. that's But I will say highlight. this, dude. I will say this. I don't think, I don't think the regular just football fan or person watching the game understands what Jimmy Garoppolo, what he's even in right now and having to go out. You, I would think that would be a workplace environment. That's just not even fun to be at because first off, you're not our guy and we're going to make sure, you know, you're not our guy and the media knows that. And then we're not going to trade you because we're going to keep you just in case our guy doesn't work out, but we're going to try to trade you. And, and then we're gonna make you restructure your contract because you're not worth what we thought we paid you before. Oh wait! And then Trey Lance is gonna get hurt out for the season. We need you. And then not only that, the same week, Garoppolo comes in and wins the game. Shanahan actually says, "Hey, we'll, we're open to any trade talk." For anybody at any time, we'll listen to anybody. It's like, bro, you are you, you kidding gotta me? be kidding me. You gotta be you kidding can't me. Even write this script. So you're talking about Jimmy G is coming into a scenario where he completely knows he's not wanted, took a pay cut, still not wanted, and the guy's gone two and one. He's winning against, games against tough football games. teams, bro. Huh? And it's like, I don't, you know, I don't think the people understand that are just going to their job every day that hate their boss or I don't want to be here. I want a different job. I, dude, I bet you Jimmy Garoppolo is in that same headspace, man. Dude, that's a tough place to go to work every day. And he no comes one, in there, he comes in there smiling every press conference, every press conference. Dude, and and I just, and, and I also, and I also, we had talked about this, you know, previous podcast. I think he has gotten way more flack than he's deserved. Same thing with like Tua. Way more fl dude. Jimmy Garoppolo over the last two years went to the Super Bowl and lost the game before the Super Bowl. How do you make this guy out to be a bum? Or yeah, yeah. he's tradable. Well, yeah, well, no way. We'll take any offer. It's like, dude, maybe you would, but why you gotta say that? It's like, so crazy. It's it's so crazy. Like I don't believe in karma. I I, I don't believe in karma. Like, but I will say that the 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 team that he's on. Right. Yep. They have planted a lot of seeds of doubt, and those seeds, if they don't get them out of the ground, they're going to grow, and it's going to well, come back. It's going to come back and get them. But this—that's the thing, Joe. Like, dude, as much as we talk about like just the mental side of the game, and the like, that would be one of my number one focuses. If I'm a, if I'm a owner, GM, head coach, like, hey, man, we got to keep these guys healthy mentally. Yeah. We need their confidence flowing. And it's just kind of like, hey, I get there's a business. You're always looking for an upgrade. Everybody gets that, man. But what good is that going to do for Jimmy Garoppolo's confidence? Like, how is that going to help him lead his team? I mean, that's just like you're undermining everything guys trying to do. Dude, they told him they were trading him right after the season last I year. Know. In, the, I know. in the hallway. 
They were like, yo, you ain't coming back. This dude started his, he started his farewell speeches like right after the season. Oh, thanks, you know, uh, nice yeah. and faithful. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, Last like thing we're gonna, him, you yeah. ain't coming back. Last thing we're going to do for you is give you that shoulder surgery, buddy, and then you're gone. It's unbelievable. And the dude is just winning. He's just winning. The dude just winning, man. Well, hey, dude, man. It's, it's like we talked about it last last year, too. It was like, dude, their winning percentage when he's playing is is noticeably higher, man. Like, he is playing good football. Dude, that's – either way, last night, did he have some gaudy numbers? No, but I'll tell you right now, dude, he had good numbers. Yeah. No mistakes. Yep. No mistakes. He was like – uh, I think he was – you know, uh, I think he had like 230, 40 yards, a touchdown, and, and moved the ball well. It's like manage the game well, and you might say, "Oh, well, we want more than that." But you try to find me ten guys doing that in the league right now. It's tough, not man. happening. It's tough. Not happening. It's, it's, it's a it's a tough year for quarterbacks, man. Up until this it point, is. Uh, with the outside of the exception of only a few, like this has been a tough year for. I mean, you, dude, this is the last thing I'll say. Geno Smith is outperforming Russell Wilson. Like, like, think about that. He's outperforming. You're getting more bang for your buck with Geno Smith at QB than Russell Wilson. And Russell Wilson is elite. So it's been, it's been a tough year, man. It's been a tough year for quarterbacks up to this point. But hopefully that just means that it's only going to get better. So, hey, yeah. my co-host, Derek Devine, this is Josiah Gunn on the All Things Performers podcast. And we told you we're going to bring those fireballs for 20, 20 minutes, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Let's you go. Light it up, man. So God bless you guys. Have a tremendous day. And we'll talk to you soon.